Okay, so we're here on this uh, Ford Focus with a two liter, two valve persona SPI, split port injection. See, the problem with these cars, on these motors anyway, is that they have a habit of dropping valve seat. Well, I pulled the number one spark plug and looked down the hole. Uh, there's really no way I can get the, the light to line. But you could see shiny spots on the piston where it looked like a piece of the, the ring or the valve seat had damaged it. So here's how you remove the cylinder head on a uh, an SPI motor. Take out the spark plugs. Keep them in order if you're going to reuse them. I just bought four new ones, so I don't really care. Lay the plug wires out of the way, and you really should have disconnected the battery first. I don't know why I didn't. So I'm going to do that now. You can probably get away with just removing the negative. Well, you can. Uh, I'm going to take the whole battery out because I need to charge this one. This car's been sitting for a couple months. Next thing is to drain the coolant. So open up the radiator cap. Get your big drain pan, and then loosen this drain bolt here. I'm not positive, but I think that when I remove this bolt, coolant comes out of this little nipple here, so I'm going to stick a little piece of hose over it. Now I can remove this bolt. Oh, I'm making a mess now. All right, I think that if I take this out all the way, it'll drain even faster. Yeah. There we go. Sweet. While it's draining, I'm going to remove the air cleaner. And then a quarter inch bolt slash screwdriver, or whatever you want, I don't know what to call it. Get this hose clamp off that holds the, uh, the hose onto the air, or the throttle body. And just pull this off, set that aside. Air filter looks clean. Oh, wow, it actually does look clean. Cool. Some of this stuff's hard to get to, so I'm going to remove the uh, box now and the battery tray. Now we get to just disconnect all sorts of vacuum hoses and, and everything else that we can find pretty much. So that'll be fun. Make sure you label everything. Disconnecting the throttle cable is pretty simple. You just rotate the cam until it's fully open, like wide open throttle, and slide this sideways. And then just pull the cable straight back. And it's pretty much disconnected here. Alright, so the hardest part of this whole ordeal is getting the fuel line disconnected disconnected. Okay, well you see in there it's got that uh, that round spring there. Well, that is basically what holds this thing from coming down. So you need to push down on this outer ring and then get a long thin flat screwdriver and while pushing down on it with one hand run the screwdriver on the inside of that spring all the way around and then keep pushing down on it and it'll be able to slide off of this little lip here. Alright, then you can pull off the uh, exhaust shield. I got that off now. And I'll unplug this other two sensor here. Uh, let's see how that comes apart. Then you can pull out the dipstick and uh, undo this little 5 16th bolt or 8 millimeter. And, uh, Flip this little thing out of the way. All right, now we can remove the uh, expansion tank here. This is so we can get access to this motor mount over here and the timing belt and the drive belt. There it is. Maybe. You can just pivot this out of the way. Alright, now I'll get yourself a 18mm uh, wrench and a breaker bar. See if you can uh, crack those loose. And then get a uh, 15. Get down to these lower ones here and do the same.
and that one came off. I'm just going to buzz these off with an impact now. Make sure you support the engine from underneath before you start doing anything, because uh, when you're moving the engine mount, the engine is not mounted as well as it was before. Go figure. Now there's four bolts that hold this on, 13 millimeter, half inch. Uh, one there, one there, one there, and one there. I have to get that accessory belt loose. There's a 3 8 hole right here. I'm going to just stick a, uh, I used a, an adapter on my half inch wrench, which gets me also a longer wrench, but it gets me a longer wrench, but also a hair longer of an extension. Okay, now there will be, uh, I think, three screws that hold the this little plastic cover on. All right, next you'll need a eight millimeter uh, Allen socket and an eighth inch drill bit so you can loosen that tensioner on the timing belt. You put the eighth inch Allen into the hole in the tensioner, put the drill bit into the little hole, and you rotate it until the drill bit goes all the way through, and that holds the tensioner open. And now you can work the timing belt off. Maybe. There we go. That bearing has got a lot of side to side play. Yeah. And listen to it when it spins. I'm guessing that's the original tensioner. The water pump feels good. It rotates smoothly. Doesn't have any play. Let's pull the valve cover next. Do this. It creates ratchet. Sorry. Get a 10 millimeter socket. Spin those off. Now we can just pry this cover right off. And set it aside, don't lose these bolts. Next you have the fun task of removing the four bolts that hold the uh, catalytic that hold the catalytic converter to the header. Now uh we probably could have done this earlier, remove the uh these water hoses here. Coolant hoses. Now we need to get way underneath the car. Way up in there. Those two 10 millimeter bolts that go into the bottom of the intake manifold need to come out. All right, to so do a final walk around, make sure you got everything around the cylinder head disconnected. I'm actually going to remove the intake manifold and the exhaust manifold with the cylinder head. It makes it easier. You get, you know, less stuff to disconnect in that confined space. This is the cylinder head bolt tightening sequence. So when you remove the cylinder head, do it in the opposite order. So now you can go ahead and loosen all the cylinder head bolts. Do it a little bit at a time, and then once they're all completely loose, you can just screw them out. Alright, let's lift it off.